Greetings everybody, Apostles for White Well-Being, Blue Ninja here from Fiery Phoenix, Arizona, Wednesday afternoon, August 4th. It is really blazing out there right now. Yesterday when I arrived, to my surprise it was 125 degrees <laughs> when I looked at the dial in my truck 125 folks that's pretty darn high that's pretty much about the highest I've seen it right around there so that's when you know you're getting really really <laughs> into the peak of the inferno season even in the desert out here 100 plus as we all know is hot enough 110 way up there 120 the teens ridiculous 120 ridiculous 125 just beyond ridiculous so i just steps out outside today and it feels like it's about that again so 125 degrees here folks phoenix arizona Hot, inferno, fiery, blazing furnace aren't even the words. <laughs> this is heat stroke weather for sure. Everything slows down, me included, my body and mind. So running a little slow here right now. Um, but I did want to make a video here. It's been a little while. Um, and uh, Blue Ninja has been tired on the road um tired everywhere all the time these days and um uh, pressing on with every little bit of strength that we have in us though and um i wanted to at least give all my warmest and best love and greetings to the one and only will helmina and matthew bayer love you both so much the blue ninja 2 and Brad C, the Blue Ninja 3, love you my brother also. And all respect, admiration, appreciation, and support to everybody else. Um, and uh, I apologize about being behind on messages. Um, and uh, to, to anyone who will know who that regards. And... Um, <clears throat> And uh, but I at least wanted to make an appearance here in video, so that I'm still alive and kicking. I hope you all are too, of course. And um, <clears throat> and at least send my best this way. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so. Um, purpose of this video here now is one main purpose um, and these are good these are really good things to share because what I'm going to share here is yet again personal experience talking with someone about white well-being this is what I think it's all about folks as we know um, sharing it one-on-one -on -one or one to a group however just <laughs> just conversations plain and simple I mean that's it sounds really simple and maybe uneventful but that's that's what is gonna move mountains for us folks I think simple conversations that's where the magic happens that's where people can have the light bulb click on ah you know what you're right never thought of it like that and if people have those realizations that turns the entire world around as we all know it's a mentality so and of course conversation is the medium through which we change the mentality with what tools words of course so um do not underestimate a simple conversation with someone that's the name of the game. That's the battle we are in. That's 
the battlefield is the battle of conversations, battle of the mind, heart, and soul. And um, anyway, so these are two purposes. Not only can we get someone to potentially, hopefully, go free and of anti-whiteism and start working for and serving white well-being, become white positive, but also to see how the masses in society is thinking. And, you know, we want to stay in touch with that. Most of us are pretty well aware. Um, Me being on the road so much, sometimes I get a little bit removed. But it's good to know, talking with someone, okay, this is what people think nowadays. (laughs) And I have never... Um, never not amazed (laughs) and sadly in a lot of negative ways at what society is and what people think so it's good to have a pulse on that so to speak and know okay this is where people are ultimately we want to just meet them where they're at try to bring them along to white well-being you know the name of the game is wherever they're at getting them further up so we need to be concerned with this anyway yesterday as I was checking into the motel um, I couldn't help but notice a fairly nice looking white woman young woman and you all will forgive me for noticing this of course (laughs) Um, can't blame me for that right and um and uh, <clears throat> I happened to notice uh, what room she went into, so I just decided to leave her a card on her door, and <clears throat> just decided I would do that. And. Uh, This is a card, of course, made by the Great Ar- Acrobats. It has the NoWhiteGuilt.org website on it. It has white positive message on it. And uh, signed my name on the back, wrote my name on the back, Blue Ninja as usual, and added my phone number. Now, who can blame me again for this? Because, hey, it's a fairly decent looking woman. Now, granted, in these types of environments, may not be a quality woman, but again, that's something we're trying to improve. And uh, as a white, but, and she turned out, I would say, not to be a quality woman, (laughs) and that was that. Um, But I, because I left my phone number on the card, we had a brief text conversation before she kind of showed that she's not very quality, and uh, and that's where it ended. Um, not a huge surprise, but nonetheless, we want to help these type of people and um, hope for the best, expect the worst, you could say. And um, <clears throat> anyway, um, that's how I say that just to know how the conversation got started. Did not give the card directly to her, didn't have a chance to talk to her in person. Um, but she did get the card, she, and we did text a little bit. Um, and I just said, you know, I wanted to give you a message of positive message. I also wrote on the card, you deserve better. <laughs> just because. Um, And I just said, look, I wanted to give you a positive message. 
for you as a white person, you know, for all white people. And just kind of explain a little bit that that's what this is about. It's about well-being for white people. And um, now I want to just, the point I'm going to make here is the classic mentality, which is how most whites still go wrong to this day, as we all know. This is the key issue, though, here. So when I, she saw the card, she saw the no white guilt message, she saw the other message about prejudice against whites is a crime. I wouldn't use the word prejudice, but nonetheless, that's what she saw in the card. And I used, you know, our lexicon, well-being, white well-being, and so forth. And her response, right away, I said, what do you think about that? Right away, her response was something like, sounds good, but then right away, but I am not racist or prejudice. And that's why I wouldn't use the word prejudice because people associate a lot of times with racism which is purely anti-white, as we know. He said, I'm not racist or prejudiced. I love all people unless they give me a reason not to. So this was her first reaction right away. I sure did not use the R word. She used it. Because this is what is in the minds of everyone. This is what people are subscribing to. That is the problem, especially among whites. Done so by the media, of course. So this is the huge problem. Now, if we were to play doctor here for an entire society, for an entire race, uh, that would be an indication of sickness. <laughs> if we were to play doctor here, give someone a message of white positive message of white well-being no white guilt and we put our doctor hats on and their response we can diagnose them based on their response to that to a white positive message of white well-being if their response is as her response, okay, but I'm not racist, Psh, bingo, prejudice, right there, that's an indication of sickness, and then goes on, I love all people, that's an indication of sickness, because that is the response that anti-whites want white people to have. Accepting all people is accepting our own erasure. That's what that is. They want us to accept everybody coming in, all the non-whites, to replace us and erase us. Accepting that, accepting your own erasure, unknowingly or knowingly, is sickness. And as I've said before, usually that is an indirect way of covering up anti-whiteism. A lot of times, the conversation ended pretty quickly after that, but if it had carried on, I bet you she would have said something against white people. Almost guaranteed. When people spout off with this stuff, hey, no, I'm, I'm not racist, prejudiced, I, I love all people. Guarantee you, you press the conversation more they will probably tell you they hate white people, they don't like white people. Something that reveals some anti-whiteism there. I've had it happen so many times. People that start off saying, I'm, I'm cool with everyone. I love everyone. And then I've had people say that and then 
a few minutes later say that they hate white people. They don't quite make the connection, I guess, um, in the contradiction uh, in what they're saying there. So, um, but it didn't get that far in this case. Uh, but someone that starts right off and says, okay, you're telling me that you're, you're supporting whites. Well, hey, I'm not racist. I love all people. That, I would say, sick person. We could diagnose that as a sick person. If they right away bring up the R word, racism, and try to defend against it, as we know, impossible. That is sickness all the way. Total sickness. She, she said exactly what the anti-whites want all whites to say. She responded textbook to the anti-whites. The anti-whites could use this conversation between me and her and say, look, look at how successful our anti-white programming is. Look at how successful these mean pathogens are. It has this white young lady just completely um, poisoned, completely programmed. So that is exactly why they put all those words there, to elicit those responses from whites. And all the trickery that they use, sadly, is still working on so many whites. So, so why is this the, the wrong response? Well, as we know, defending against racism, trying to prove you're not racist, can never work. And that loses. You have already lost. Just by trying to do so. Why? Because you are believing in the word, as I've talked about before. Any belief in that word is losing the battle. So she speaks, she speaks the word as if it's legitimate. Then she says, I'm not that even worse. That's falling straight into the trap as neatly as possible and just captured and done for by the anti-whites. Best case scenario for the anti-whites when a white responds like that. Acknowledges racism, keeps it real, then tries to defend against it. Just the white is a sitting duck as much as can be in that scenario and just trapped and captured and defeated. So as soon as she said that, yeah, I'm not racist or prejudiced because blah, 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 she, she's gone. She's totally infected, 100%, thoroughly sick with anti-whitism. This is a very, very gravely sick person. I love all people, blah, 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 also pathogenic more of an indirect way of displaying anti-whitism and mean pathogens. That is sick talk. Now, why is this so defeating for us? Well, as we all know, believing in this word racism, prejudice, if it's applied against whites, saying you love all people, blah, 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 as a white. You're accepting your own erasure in today's day and age. That makes us defenseless. That's why that is our defeat. Believing in those things is equivalent to putting up all your defenses, putting down all your defenses, full surrender, and saying, Take me, anti-whites, erase me, do what you will. That kind of response, that is what that is saying. It is saying, 
I am defeated, I, I'll be erased, whatever. You're surrendering to erasing yourself. So what is the correct response? Well, the response of a healthy person is very simple. Well, yes, of course I support white people. I'm white. That's a healthy person. And it's very simple, it's very obvious to us. But if you're the doctor, the white positive doctor, trying to diagnose this member of the white race, and you say, here's a message of white well-being for you and your people, supporting you, loving you and all your people. Here's a positive message for you, sister or brother. Obviously a healthy person, what would their response be? It would be, awesome, thank you very much. Absolutely, I agree with it. And of course I do, of course I support whites. I'm white, why wouldn't I? It's a very simple, natural, easy response. <laughs> Most people have just, now why do people not think of doing this? They're thinking, wait a minute, if I do that, that's somehow bad. That is sickness right there. If they think that it's bad, which a lot of whites do, that is sickness because of the anti-white media that says it's bad to do so. So when they start thinking, oh, maybe this is bad. Maybe I can't support myself and my people. Maybe I have to prove that I'm not the R word and that I love everybody and accept everybody. When they go along that route, right away, that's mean pathogens triggering just as planned, like clockwork. Couldn't work any better for the anti-whites when it goes like that. When I go to a white person and I say, any of us, and we say, got a message of white well-being for you, and the white person responds, I'm not racist, I love all people. The anti-whites <laughs> are rubbing their hands like, ah, working like a charm. That is what exactly what they want. They could not want anything more than that. That is perfection for them as to things working exactly as they designed them to. That is exactly the reason they put those things there. So that a person, when a person receives a message that supports them, the pathogens get in the way and they can't just say, yes, I agree with it, I'm white, of course. They have these, it's so simple, but then they have these complex, they go down a much harder and more complex path because of the mean pathogens that get triggered one by one wait a minute, I can't support whites, that, that might be bad. And then also I have to prove that I'm not racist. I also have to say that I accept everybody. All those things are purely media programmed, they're not natural. And when whites go down that pattern, that chain, that line, that is purely direction by the anti-whites. The anti-whites are saying, when you, when you encounter someone that wants to give you a message of well-being, you go this route. Try to prove you're not racist. That's the anti-whites programming. So that is how whites are derailed from supporting, loving themselves and all of their people. Exactly why and how the anti-whites plan it. It's exactly the purpose of what they do. Exactly what they are planning for that very thing to happen. That's exactly why they've t put all the pathogens there that they have for all this time, for that specific reason. Now, so what happened? She was basically unable to defend herself. She basically couldn't defend herself. She couldn't accept a positive message toward her. She couldn't accept anything good about her. I told her she has a lot to be proud of as a white. She should be proud of her ancestors that created the modern world and so forth. The media's lies. I told her this. I told her racism is an anti-white slur. It kind of fell on deaf ears, I think, unfortunately, by her responses. All that is exactly what the anti-whites want. They want someone like her to, when someone like me gives her a positive white, positive message, 
to be completely derailed and just not receive it. Maybe she will eventually, but <laughs> doesn't seem so. So, as we know, anytime a white instinctively responds, oh, I'm not racist, or they start talking about that, I'm not, I'm not prejudiced, I'm not against anyone, it's completely wrong, completely off the rails, completely anti-white designed. Without all the anti-whiteism of the past several decades and beyond, whites would simply say, of course I'm for my people, these are my people, this is me. Why wouldn't I? It's like someone who's a, you know, living in Cincinnati and the Bengal, you know, Cincinnati Bengals football team, whatever your sports team is, say, I live in Cincinnati, of course I'm a Bengals fan. Of course I'm a, um, a Reds fan for the baseball players, you know, their team. Chicago, of course I'm a Bears fan, of course I'm a Bulls fan, right? I live in Chicago, of course. My team all the way. My team's going to beat your team. Healthy stuff there. Normal stuff. It's only that whites don't have it. It's, it. Whites don't have it only because it has been deprogrammed in us. If we were left alone, instead of harmed with all the anti-whiteism for all these several decades and centuries, we would just say, of course, of course, this is our team, this is our race, this is our people, this is our kind, this is our nation, this is everything. Of course I love whites. I am white, can't you see that? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the kind of response you would get from a healthy person, just of course, obviously. Obviously I love whites, I'm white. My family's white, my people. Western kind, so forth. It would be a clear, obvious yes. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> that would be the healthy response. Why wouldn't I love whites? I'm white. Why would you ever think I wouldn't? That would be a healthy response. We wouldn't even need to talk about this if it wasn't for the, all the anti-whiteism. So, This is where so many people are at, trying to prove that they're not some anti-white slur or another. This is all anti-whiteism, all the anti-white narrative that so many people, so many whites are still in. Our only escape, our only hope of living is to get out of it. Now. <clears throat> As we all know, what is the reality? The reality is that racism and a lot of these other anti-white slurs are weapons used against whites, which I told this girl. I said it's an anti-white slur, it is a weapon, nothing more, used against whites. Whites are being attacked and erased. Now, this is what we need to reframe everything as. Rather than trying to defend against this concept of racism, frame it as it is simply a weapon against whites. That's, that's our narrative. So it's a totally different way of looking at it. Now, the, the, the other fundamental thing here that this reveals when people try to prove that they're not racist, when they try to prove that they're not against anyone of any race and so forth, that misses the path right away and they're going off into the anti-white narrative right away because most people when they do this, they view white positivity as an attack on other races, inherently. 
implicitly. When you say, I support whites, what do you think of that? Most people say, well, I'm, I'm not against anyone. So that reveals that most people equate supporting white people, defending white people, with attacking non-whites. This is totally false. Obviously, we are not attacking anybody. We are defending ourselves. We are stopping the attacks. We are not attacking. We are defending. We are, we are not increasing attacks. We are reducing attacks. We are reducing the attacks that are coming to us, toward us. But the fallacy most people have is that serving white people, well-being of whites, is somehow equivalent to attacking non-whites. This is the big fallacy. And that's a, another part of the anti-white narrative that causes people to try to prove they're not racist and they're not against non-whites and so forth. Because of this equivalency people have of if you serve white people, you must be somehow against non-whites. Completely false. Now the media, the anti-white media, enforces this idea on purpose, of course, of equating serving whites with being against non-whites. So the people will, it's all by design that people will think, wait a minute, if I serve whites, that, that might mean I'm against non-whites. I don't want to be seen as that. So it's all backwards. So, how do we get people to understand that serving whites is simply just that? Helping whites, reducing the attacks to us. Well, it is, as we know, done by sort of replacing the word racism with anti-whiteism. That's how it's done, as we all know. Now, the reason, it's not really a true replacement, but it is what it more is, is it is more revealing the truth of what's going on. It is more calling things what they actually are. So this helps people to understand that serving white well-being is truly serving whites, not being against anyone. You are on the good side, on the right side, if you are defending and serving whites. And... <clears throat> the anti-white narrative says the opposite, of course. Um, and um, so we want people to understand that anti-whiteism is what is wrong. And all those fancy words they use, racism, 